Let's stick my tongue in her ear, yo. We've been live for a few seconds. They like that. This nigga wanted to touch my mama's umbilical cord inside with his tongue. It is what it is, bro. <laughs> you know, I realized something like maybe three years ago that changed my life. Belly buttons are nasty as fuck unless you tell somebody. Go watch that shit. Hey, Chase's wife. Hey. Don't say hey for her. <laughs> you ain't Chase's wife. You're Chase. This ain't Utah. For some, for some reason, I was saying hey to her as well. I, I don't know. It was a weird response. That'll, that'll, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> but yeah, belly buttons are nasty as fuck, dog. Like, I, I, can, can, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Na- belly buttons are kind of kind of gross. Like, they collect shit that I don't know how it starts smelling like that. But yeah, if you wash your belly button and then you're brave enough to sniff the towel because you get bored, you will knock yourself out. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of like the, your belly button in the back of your ear. It's like, how the fuck did that get like that? Exactly. Why the fuck does my belly button smell like smegma? <laughs> <laughs> well, the ear <laughs> thing, I, I, actually, I, I've been thinking, like, maybe that's not nasty. Because a lot of it happens, like, after the shower. I think it's mostly just, like, um, soap scum. Dead man. skin. Yeah, and, and dead skin and soap. Soap scum and dead skin, and it just it's just there. Because once you dry it off, it's not there that often. But that shit in your belly button... Like if you forget to wash your belly button for like three days, not not like on y'all 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 white folks shit where y'all don't be washing your legs on purpose. I mean, if y'all just washing your belly and you forget to stick the towel the towel into your belly button for a few days, your belly button starts to smell like literal shit. Not washing our legs on purpose. Yeah, white man, folks, that man, big, is that a that thing? Was a that was a big deal. That was a white thing. Folks, I'm, white glad, white I'm glad. I'm glad you're. On. I'm glad you're surprised by it, because that means you're one of the good ones. <laughs> exactly. No, they were talking about that. They were talking I mean, about the fact that... And, like, I mean, famous people was talking about not not taking a bath unless they needed to. So, like, well, they would go... Walk in the like, rain. I go for rain walks. Like, yeah. what kind of hobo are you? Yeah, they were like, <laughs> I don't take a shower unless I look dirty. It's like... Fuck do you... Well, you know what? You know what? In their defense, they, Scar. But if they're right, Hollywood... can look smudged. If they're Hollywood people, then they'll never look dirty because they're not really doing like hard labor or nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Only time they take a bath is to wash off the blackface. <laughs> Chase, what's your favorite five fruits of all time? I'm <laughs> saying tangerine should be somewhere within that top five. Um, can I lump tangerines in with oranges? I mean, it's like kind of orange, orange family, right? <laughs> Scar. I, I I'll allow it. Okay. All right, go for it. <laughs> um. Let's see. If you need time to think about it, I've been giving it some thought. I'm ready to bust mine out right the fuck now. Okay, go ahead. I I think I got mine, too. Okay, and these aren't numbered. It's just what's in your top five. Can we make that that agreement, Scar? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pineapples, Mm -hmm. peaches, tangerines, grapes, strawberries. Hmm. That's not mine, but I, but I, I, I feel you. I feel you. I, I definitely say strawberries. I mean, but everything is like strawberries don't make mine, dog. It, it it's always dependent, right? Because if you get yeah. a sour ass strawberry, you're like, you, you're like, what the fuck is this shit? And if you get a bad container of strawberries, that fucks up your whole day, right? So like, it, it's definitely dependent on the strawberries. But um, I definitely put blueberries in there because uh, I mean, you know, pancakes. But yeah, um, for sure. the um peaches. How many is that? Is that three? That's three. Okay. Um, I definitely fuck with some pineapple, and I'm really blanking on the third one, the fifth one. Okay. I'm not gonna pressure you. Tomato. 
Tomato? <laughs> T- tell your wife to come to the screen so she can see my face right now. Tomatoes are fruits. I know. Tell her to come over. To- tell her to just look at the camera so we can look eye to eye on this one. I know your wife, the one who said that shit. I know it wasn't you because you looked to the side. I know it wasn't you, Chase. It, it was me, but yeah. I-, I-, I was I was just trying to think. I-, I-, I couldn't think of another sweet one. But tomato, if I'm going to put anything in the top five, if you don't consider tomato fruit, which it is, I mean, it's a staple. Oh, you so got pretty it. Ma- you got it. Because pretty ma- every sandwich, I'm going to have to have tomato on it. Yeah, no, you got it. Because I can sit down with a tomato, some salt and pepper, and be happy as fuck. And if you give me a good piece of provolone to go with that motherfucker, boy, look. Scar, one of us is the chef, and the other one is you. So you can stop shaking your head. I don't, I don't head. like tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes. So you know what? Neither does Kenny. You know what, Scar? Ooh, and Chase. You know what, though? Ooh, life has been uh, so much happier since answer. Kenny moved the fuck out. Life has been so much better. Kenny moved out, and now we can eat peanuts in the house. <laughs> I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for the first time in 15 years. My son's allergic to peanuts. <laughs> yeah, you told me about the time you went in one of those Texas places, and it was peanuts everywhere. And, and we had to crazy. walk right the fuck back out. It was, it was like that scene on... Um, on the um, Simpsons? No, no, no! It was um, uh, uh, um, Blue put his in the chat. Um, what was it Money Talks where he's walking towards something and somebody says something? It's like, Phoop! and he turns, and he just turns around real fast. Um, all right, so apples. Walk. Okay. Wait, wait, wait! What color this mine, apples? This is mine. This is mine. I'm a, I'm a Granny Smith fan. Okay, cool. I got worried, but I can roll with some gallows or some Honey Crisp if necessary. <laughs> Okay, for sure, for sure. Okay, and and golden delicious. Okay, I I know I I'll, I'll, I think I'm gonna go back to the golden sh- delicious way. Yeah. Um. All right. So, well, you know what? Let me do blues first. Blues did peaches, cherries, pears, apples, pineapple. He put where the cherries. fuck is this chat happening at? I want to see this shit. I, I, I want to. Twitch. Twitch, uh, give me the Twitch link. Oh, uh, Twitch. slash Nepo. Yeah, Twitch slash Nepo. Fucking Twitch TV slash Nepo. I hope you get Nepo. Okay, your top five, go. Or Blues top five. I just gave you Blues. All right, so mine's... I didn't hear it. Do it again. I was talking shit about you. It, it happens. Peaches, cherries, pears, apples, pineapples. That you know what? Good. A good that cherry good. A, a good cherry is world-changing. I ain't even going to front. I, I, it's, there's, it's, never, there's never a time where I was just like, you know what? I really want some cherries. Right it, cherries is so... It never happened to me. It, it's... It's like a t- it's like a bomb though, you know what I mean? Because it can mm-hmm. go real bad. You can have some cherry mm-hmm. and it tastes like straight up medicine. Yes, yes. But sorry. yeah, Scott's in the chat. He said top five fruits. Yeah, <laughs> we we're talking about our top five fruits. And you so. better keep it clean, Scott. I don't want to hear no kind of jokes. It better be some real type shit. So if you say anything about kiwis, get the fuck out of my face. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna say mean, money. He be like, no, it's the fruits of my he's, labor. <laughs> He's gonna say he can eat a piece for hours, but um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I can't wait to discuss face off on our show. Apples, oranges, pineapple, grapes, watermelon. Apples, oranges, pineapples, grape, watermelon. Here's the problem with watermelon for me: when it's good, it's fucking wonderful. But when it's not hitting, like if you get just like he was just saying about the the strawberries, if you get a bad watermelon. That's a lot of bad watermelon you got to eat, and that shit is frustrating. And then with a pack of strawberries, you're like, it's just basically you can fit it in your hand, you know? So but Yeah, it's, it's two bites. You get a watermelon, that's a watermelon, my nigga. Have you ever had a golden watermelon? Oh, my God. So this one dude that worked with me when I worked at the DMV, he used to go somewhere. I don't know. For all I know, motherfucker sold drugs on the side. I don't know. He disappeared for like six days and come back with a crate of golden watermelons and would just pass them out. And it was literally golden sweet, and I've never ever had anything like it before. Uh, I mean, some of the just don't have no flavor, man. Yeah. Okay. So Scott said watermelon, apple, grapes, oranges, bananas. I can see that. I like bananas. They're in the top ten. I do not like bananas, and I damn sure don't like banana flavor stuff. I know you don't like banana pudding. And I know that you were always that motherfucker who didn't like banana flavor an hour later. I just um, I could eat them, but I don't no I I well I've never had I never get banana flavored now later because you have to specifically ask for those. But if you get some if you get a bag of I mean, laffy, uh, laffy taffy, I'm sorry, yeah, I said an hour yeah. later. 
Yeah, if I have a bag of Laffy Taffy's, like they'll be the last ones I eat, but I'll still eat them. Yeah, but I, don't want them. I thought the now and later's come, and they can't go to waste. You I know thought, what I mean? I thought now and later's come with a banana in there. I don't know how I'd like it now because some things you're like, especially sweet shit, you like when you're a kid, and you have it now. You're like, this just tastes like pure sugar. But yeah, banana flavor Laffy Taffy tastes like just sweet. Like it tastes like sweet with with banana flavor well banana cologne on top of it hmm. it doesn't work well the now and latest when i was a kid i liked it mainly because it was the only it, it was different everything else was just like you know cherry and strawberry and you know basic shit and then you know they come with a, oh well there's something different you know but i don't know if i'd like it now because actually a lot of sweet shit i don't really dig these days until I'm digging some sweet shit, and then I want some sweet you shit. You said flavor-wise, all grape everything, with one exception. Jelly. Gatorade. Gatorade. Jelly. Grape Gatorade is the fucking worst. Yo. Yo. And grape okay. Gatorade it- always sneaks up on you because you're just like, oh, shit, I'm going to give some grape. And then, you, and then when you take your first sip, you remember why you don't buy grape. So, here's the thing. Grape Gatorade is close to the worst. The best Gatorade in the world is that Glacier White Cherry motherfucker. Like, that shit no. is fucking fantastic. The, the light blue. Like, we don't... Come on, dog. You if, you if you say the actual flavors of Gatorade, you a cop. But, um... <laughs> but, like, it's the, the light blue. The reason why I know... The reason why I know the exact name of that flavor is because when the when I open the container as an AAU coach and those motherfucking kids go running towards that box like Gatorade I gotta tell them specifically don't touch that fucking Glacier Frost Cherry you do not touch that white one don't do that shit that Glacier Blue though is the Glacier Blue is my shit dog come on the car I never tried it that Glacier Blue is my shit. I fuck with. But well, look at this: uh, the athletic director at the school that I coach at. <laughs> this motherfucker pulls out a box, like not a box of Gatorades, but a actual package box. And from that package box, he pulls out like a bag that looks like the blue ice from fucking uh, Breaking Bad, and it is powdered Gatorade. And he pours it into a big ass pitcher, and we have this huge, like the 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 church revival cooler pitcher of white glacier cherry Gatorade, my nigga. Like I took two contain. I can say my nigga. Well, I said my nigga the last time I was on here. Chase didn't worry about it. Yeah, we're, um, we're okay, I call Chase my nigga all the time. So we good. <laughs> he just can't. So say. I. Filled up like three huge containers and brought it home with me. I was so happy. He won't tell me who his source is. I'm getting mad at him. He got the hook up. Yeah. Right? You gotta, go, you gotta see Walt White for that. I'm standing on his back. What movie was that where the dude was like, just blow? Where he was like, just tell me who your just tell me who your connect is. Just tell me who your connect is. And he was like, fine, it's Derek for real. And he was like, Pee Wee <laughs> fucking Herman. Exactly. <laughs> I remember. I think I liked that movie at the time. I love that movie. I have not seen I really... it. I've not seen it in a long time, but I think I liked that movie at the time. I gotta be honest. I don't see the allure of Penelope Cruz. I think she's as skinny as a uh, my microphone. But the movie itself was fucking fantastic. I think it's one of Johnny Depp's best works. Penelope Cruz never did it for me. Not like Selma. Yeah, Selma Hayek. I mean, if she had came out before Desperado came out, she might have had a chance. But when Selma Hayek walked across that street, and then she showed up in From Dusk Till Dawn, and then and nigga, I, I don't the even tweets. like, I don't even like snakes, nigga. I, I was like, yo, I wasn't even mad that her titties turned vampiric. I was just like, mm, you could bite me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, she, you, your wife still standing around you? No, she's playing Destiny right now. So you see that? You see that movie? You see? Uh, you see From Dusk Till Dawn? You see oh, all yeah. the things be hanging? Oh yeah, she she seen that movie. <laughs> yeah, we're um Robert Rodriguez, a lot of his shit around here. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know the only movie I haven't seen of his. Um, I never saw Grind Note or Grindhouse. I've never seen them either. Yeah. I was gonna watch it when it was on Netflix for a short, and right when I went to go watch it, the shit they took it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had the they had the double feature with Machete and all that other shit. I saw Machete. Uh, that was the first time I saw Lindsay Lohan's uh, Lohan's. 
Um, Unless that was a body double. I've never seen it. All right, Brandon. Uh, I'm you here. Just to the- <clears throat> you, just, you just walked into some shit. Top five fruits of all time. Go. Oh, the number one fruit is blood oranges. Number okay. two. That falls never- under the category of oranges. Okay. No, blood oranges. Okay. This nigga. Two- <laughs> number two is the cotton candy grapes. I mean, not the cotton God. candy grapes. The purple grapes that look like dicks. Like little dicks. Uh, you know what? Fuckers. I have, I, I, without, without going too far into it, I have had those. I had them at Sam's Club. They are fucking fantastic. <laughs> and we call them yeah. baby pinkies because they, they look like they're like this long and they're just knobby as fuck. Go ahead. Number three. I, I forget the name of those, but they're fantastic. Nigga number three are Granny Smith apples. Okay. Right on. Number three. Number four are nectarines, which are fantastic. I'll put those up there with peaches. I'll put them side by side. Usually I'm more of a white peach person. And number five is a tie of lemon and limes. I'm the only person who peels lemon and limes and eats them. No, I eat lemons. Um, What we used to do back in the day is we would take a lemon and cut it in half and then stick a cherry um, lifesaver into the middle of it and just let it sit there for a second. So it soaked the acidity cut into and broke down the the, uh, lifesaver. And then we would have cherry lemonade like lemons because we can afford that shit, but we could pay 50 cent for a pack of lifesavers. And we had a lemon tree in the backyard. We also had a plum tree. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Plum. I forget about plums, man. Plums are really plums good. Are man. Shit. But if you eat too many of them, it's a shit too. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot about until y'all said something. I forgot about peaches. I never think about peaches. I love peaches. Dude, the, the, the thing until I actually went to the store for myself as an adult, my favorite, my favorite Minute Maid was always the fruit punch in the container. And then one day I went in there and I saw that they had that peach juice and that was the day everything changed. Um, Blue said he grew up with a peach tree. And See? He, do you guys remember a juice called Five Alive? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't think they make that no more, but I used to love that, man. Nah, man. Sunny D put them niggas out of business, dog. <laughs> but Sunny D is you know, so overrated, man. Sunny D tastes like Tampico without the heart. <laughs> you know, Sunny D was a bad motherfucker when you broke. Like, you know what I mean? It's like you see the commercials and shit like that, and you're like, yo, I want some of that fucking Sunny D. And then you get some, and you were just like, this was not worth it. Well, every like 90s Sunny- commercial makes everything seem like you're going to become a superhero. So, I forgot Sunny about, D. I, no, hold on, wait, wait. I forgot about clearly Canadian peach. Wild. Naturally. I should. Sorry. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> that from before you were born. Yeah. I know what Sunny D is. It's disgusting fake orange juice. <laughs> no, what I was going to say is Sunny D was the first and last time I said that something was too thick for me to enjoy. I like orange. I liked orange Gina when I was a kid. Orange, orange Gina? Gina. Orange Gina. I orange Gina came with a glass bottle and it was carbonated orange juice. Ooh. Huh. Okay, so two things. One, we would do that on our side, but we would take orange juice and then pour Sprite in that motherfucker and thought that we were fancy because <laughs> uh, the parents would be like talking about drinking mimosas and all that kind of shit. So we wanted bubbly orange juice too. So we would take Sprite and pour it in there. Um, oh, did the you do the is, fruit punch to make Tahitian treat? <laughs> All, up top for Tahitian treat Chase. That's why I love you. Tahitian <laughs> treat takes the shit out of fucking Hawaiian punch, but like it's like you you got you got to go to the hood. Like the ain't no ain't nowhere ain't nobody got it except for the hood. Like, exactly. You got to go, you gotta go to that eleven on the corner. <laughs> yeah, you got to go to the hood corner store because you can't get that nowhere else. No, so, there was a moment in my life where I realized that there were things that were regional. So that orange Gina that you were talking about, Brandon, that was probably regional to your coast. Because in Washington... It's made by no, it's not. No, it's not. Because we never heard no, of it. There's, there's a lot of stuff that's made by people that aren't everywhere. Because in Washington, you know how they have orange slice? They used to have slice all over the place, and they have orange slice. In Washington, they had apple slice. And it was apple cider soda. They also have Manzanita Soul in California. I know you saw that one, Brandon. They ain't got that everywhere. So I feel like, like an orange drink would be a lot of places where it's warm. Mm-mm. That just seems like good marketing. It feels like that would be more based towards the the southeast because of Florida being the orange state. Damn, Blue said they sell Tahitian tree at Dollar Tree. Uh, they do. You know what? The happiest they ever had at a Dollar Tree was when they sold um the uh the fuck IBC root beer. 
They sold IBC root beer six pack bottles at the Dollar Tree near my house, and I bought nine cases of it. Six pack bottles at Dollar Tree, dude, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, people wow. that say they don't like uh, root beer, or whatnot, ha- have only had barks, and I'm like, dude, that soda that is flavored like root beer, dude, mm-hmm. like real. Root- I mean, the Frosties are pretty good, but still, the IBC is like king, man. I mean, so you like root beer so- floats too, like root beer. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, until, you do, until they give him the shits. A root beer. Like, give me a cream soda, but never a huge fan of Cream beer. soda? What? Yeah, cash rolls everything around him, soda. No, nah, get, nah, get you some get you some <laughs> cream soda and put some fireball in that bitch? Oh. So what I used to do is I would take root beer, Scar, Scar's just and ready I though. would pour some vanilla rum into it, Scar, and that would be my root beer float, alcoholic beverage. This guy said root beer is garbage. No, nobody. I'm, 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 root beer I, I is garbage. I, can I agree. So here's the thing. Y'all are wrong. And also, if you take... See, the problem is y'all don't know how to drink root beer like a grown-up. What you do is you learn how to make a frosted mug. You take that frosted mug and you pour that root beer into it. And that changes your whole life. If also, you can eat so, if you can eat pizza... Shit, then I, I don't need it. If you can what eat you pizza ate? without what root beer, w? no, IBC. What? A and W. Yeah, that's you. You're A and W. You're A and W. Think you classy, but you really on every hood corner. <laughs> my, man, my man probably likes Schweppes. <laughs> the fuck? Isn't, they make ginger ale, right? Yeah. Yeah, they make ginger ale. Yeah, but that, you know what? I never you don't, you don't do the you only don't, you don't, you don't the only ginger ale damn swept for with my for my upset stomach. Got to be some Canada Dry, dog. Like, the we, the only ginger ale we was allowed to drink in the house is Canada Dry. I didn't know about anything else until I was like in college. Oh, oh did you know that Canada Dry makes tonic water? That shit's good, man. They're they're, they're tonic what's, water. What's, wait, what does tonic water taste like? Does that you go? That's the gin, with gin, right? It goes it's with like one, water. It's, it's like salsa water, but it it's got tang. yeah, it's got that uh, I, I, uh, quinine or quinine or however you say it in it that gives it. Inwa? <laughs> is that how you say it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's like a um, but it has like kind of a bitter flavor. But to yeah. me, it's it's related to ginger ale because ginger ale is kind of a spicy flavor when yeah, the tonic water is more of a bitter flavor, but it's still. Got that kind of bubbly. I only drink ginger beer now. That's good. Or, or ginger ale. Like this is going to sound really fancy. I only drink ginger ale that has real cane sugar in it. You know, and don't get on me, uh, Americans. I had a Moscow. I had a Moscow Mule um, <laughs> about three months ago, and that shit was fire. Like straight <laughs> up. Blue said, "If you have a BJ's restaurant and brew house near you, there is it's one of those things where you have to say the whole thing so it don't sound weird. Like when you talk about Five Guys Burgers and Fries, like you have to say the whole thing or it sounds weird." Um, he <laughs> said, "Their their house their house root beer <laughs> in the frosted glass is so good. They also make orange cream soda. That sounds they like do. It. He's right. They do. It's it's very good. I took a go go for both of them and they're hella good. They, BJ's they a- also has a pork chop dish." That is like the best pork chop from a chain restaurant. That's the qualifier. The best pork chop. From I'm a glad chain you said that. Ever. They sell it with mashed potatoes and bacon jam, which you wouldn't expect to get from a chain restaurant. It's fantastic. My wife went to culinary school. We went to BJ's one time. We always get chicken wings. We tried that. She was like, oh, this doesn't belong here. That was her response. <laughs> wow. This does not belong <laughs> here. This does not belong here. You know what? I said that same. <laughs> I said that same fucking thing when I went to uh, Little Caesars a couple days ago because I wanted a stuffed crust pizza badly. And um, I don't fuck with um, Pizza Hut. And I don't, the round table's pizza is always too expensive. So I was going to get Papa John's. But then the Papa John's that was nearby me, it reviews horribly. So I didn't want them. And somebody put in that review for Papa John's, yo, Little Caesars is better. So I went to Little Caesars website and it turns out they have a stuffed crust pizza for 13 bucks. And that shit is incredible. It oh, makes Little Caesars, Caesars have good it is. $13 pizza? You ain't get yes. the Batman? That was the $5 hot and ready. No, the $5 hot and ready tastes like a tombstone pizza. That stuffed crust pizza I, is. I, I'm with you. You ain't get the I, Batman, though? No. 
a Batman where they basically have like the it's the like the, the calzones on the side. Yes, nigga, like they fold up the ears and they got calzones on the side. That shit looks fucking fantastic. I've never gotten it, but um, but <laughs> that shit looks fantastic. Ooh, yeah. I feel you. I hate Papa John's too, fam. It was just one of those things where I was feeling weak. Nah, man, Little Caesars, Tombstone. Look, Tombstone is Chuck E. Cheese pizza. That's the level that that Tombstone is at. But I Chuck E. Cheese redid their pizza from what no, I heard. From they didn't. No, they didn't. That's hey, what they did. I mean, <clears throat> the nah, fucking fucking Chuck E. Cheese is Tony's dog. Like, the hot and talking about, but the hot and <laughs> ready. Right. It's the best piece you can get for five bucks or f- however much it is now. Five thirty-five. I, or I urge y'all. Look, real talk. I urge you. To go to Little Caesars and try one of their thirteen dollars stuffed crust pizzas. If you like stuffed crust pizzas, and if yeah. you don't like their pizza, let me know, and I will Venmo you some money to cover the cost of that pizza. Mom, all right, Blue <laughs> said he had a papadilla, and they're very good. They're thicker and fluffier than you think. Um, that's oh, their. Papa that's their okay. I heard. I heard the. Pa- I heard the papadilla was uh, disappointing. My coworker got some when they first came out, and is she this was the Trump like, supporter. This shit is disappointing. <laughs> is this the Trump supporter though? <clears throat> mm, they both were at, the, at this time. They both were. Okay, so her taste buds may have been ruined by COVID. <laughs> <laughs> have y'all been to New York? Or no, nigga. Particularly you- New York. And got I mean, an authentic calzone from like an Italian like, pizza place. No. It is Ugh. the best tasting thing you can imagine. You gotta like it is the best tasting thing you can imagine. It's not. It's not. Not <laughs> that I can imagine. Been, not that I can imagine. Like, when you hit hyperbole like that, I can I can break it apart. You know why, you know why I did this? I did this like twenty years ago because uh-huh. I watched the episode of Seinfeld where they were going to buy these calzones and everybody was going crazy over these calzones. And I had never heard of a calzone before in my life. Before I saw this episode of Seinfeld. So I went to New York, like, maybe a couple months after that. And I was like, I got to go to a cow. I want to taste what a cow zone is. And someone told me, like, oh, you go to this place. This is the best, you know, you know, the best New York style pizza. And they got cow zones. And I went in there and they baked the cow zone from scratch and they pull it out. And it's just, like, perfect. And so every time I go to New York, there's two things I get. I go to a Jewish deli and I get pastrami or rye. And then I go and get a calzone. <laughs> you get a lox and bagel while you're at it? Like- <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get a box. I don't get a bagel with cream cheese. I got it here. But yeah, pa- yeah Papa John's sauce is just too sweet, man. I just hate the sauce. Yes, it is. Papa John has has decent toppings, but their sauce is trash. They have great toppings. You know what? But let's let's circle back around to Brandon saying this is the best thing in the world. It is compared to calzones. You no, you said the best thing in the world. Yeah, Brandon. within the context of pizzas. No calzones. No, no. Didn't you, you learn about context best. clues? When you you were said school? the best you thing in the world, Brandon. Even in Italian foods. In yeah, pizzas come... in calzones. We weren't talking about Italian food. We're talking about pizzas. What do you think? What do you get in your calzone, by the way? I'm basic. I just get pepperoni and fresh mozzarella. You are basic, but okay. a little bit. Sometimes a little bit of Italian sausage. I get Italian sausage and olives. I'm, I've gotten a stromboli from here or there, but like stromboli is basically a calzone without the extra ricotta or whatever the fuck is in it. Um, it's, it's also somebody softer. Just, somebody just wrapped mm. up a fucking pizza. Yeah, I met a Stromboli <laughs> once at home, and those <laughs> things are fucking immense. They're like, nah, I'm, you get you get you a meat lovers, bruh. There's a place. Where you go, Sbarro, Scar? No, no, no. There's a place. In, there's, a place, there's a place in Hampton, and they do um, pepperoni, sliced sausage, and ham inside the Stromboli. And let me tell you, that <laughs> motherfucker. First of all, that shit is huge. Like it's. I mean, they put it in a pizza box. They put it in a large pizza box because it's that big. Across, so man, that shit is so fucking good, man. I'm, it makes me want to go home. I'm <laughs> man, you can't get that in Richmond. I can't get, I can't get it like that in Richmond. Like I can get one, but it ain't really the same thing. So I typically, if I go to a, a Italian joint, I typically get like an Italian sausage sub or some shit like that. You know, like you know, what I mean, like fuck it, I'll just, I'll get this because it's not really. We had the conversation about Sabaros Blue. We had the conversation about Sabaros, but we had it on um, Turn Oswald. 
the the thing about Sabaro. So Scar, tell me about this Vincenzo's because because Blue is preaching the gospel, and I'm let, curious. Let now. me tell you, we went to so when Blue was here, um, we went to a, uh, this Italian joint called Vincenzo's, and we got the meat lovers lasagna. This thing, it was probably like the best thing I have ever had out of any Italian joint. It was. Mm. It, and it was like it was like the best meat lovers lasagna you've ever had, but that shit was drenched in cheese. Like it was like a cheese curtain over this bitch. Like, oh my, like dog. <laughs> this shit. It's but it's kind of far away from me where I am now. It's about 40, 40, 45 minutes away from me now. It's close to like where Virginia State is. Um, but like mm. dog, that that fucking meat lovers lasagna was everything. We ended up going back before, like we we went there twice before Blue left. <laughs> like you know what I mean? So like we went there, and you know they went to some of the other places. Uh, went to the um the went to the Kroger spot and got some um got some um got some of that the the the, the drunk Kool Aid. I heard the drunk Kool Aid was off the chain, but like deal that that lasagna was everything. And I haven't been back. So it was everything, but you have not been back. No, nah, because first of all, I'm no, you said enough. Say less. I'm like to. I'm like to. Say, say, so say I, less, that, all that cheese. That cheese was great, but um, but like, yo, we hit. We we went to. We went back to that place, and I had the same thing again. Because like, yo, it was. I was like, I cannot come here and not get this at this point. But all that cheese, man, I had to have three lactase in order to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I had, I had to do three of them. I think once. I think the second time I may have four. Because it was that much cheese on this shit. Like, <laughs> so new, 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 new thing, new drink, new drink, new drink, new drink. Name a movie where you keep one character and everybody else, one live character and everybody else's Muppets. The homeboy Antoine or Mr. Span put that on Facebook, and I immediately thought of Kill Bill, Volume One. Except the only human that's left in the movie is Buck. Everybody else is a Muppet. That's such an eclectic question. I don't even know how to answer it. I, I, my first, my, my initial thought was and keep and who would stay. Keep who, keep you. Okay. Oh, got the answer. The Jungle Book. There's one human and a bunch of animals. That's cheating. That don't count, man. That counts. Hey, why don't you do like Petey Wheatstraw? <laughs> Too many great characters in that movie. Fuck you. I would <laughs> definitely see a Muppet version of Kill Bill. Chase, what you got? For what? Name a movie <laughs> where you where everybody's a Muppet except for one live character. So you take name name a movie that you would like to see remade where everybody's a Muppet except for one character who's a human. And I chose Kill Bill and Buck would be the human. And Scar chose the Matrix and Hugo <laughs> Weaving, Agent Smith would be the human. Don't and Brandon it. hasn't answered yet. No, I said jungle book. Yeah, you didn't answer yet. Blue Blue chose the Punisher. He didn't say who who lives because we don't know which Punisher we talking about. The, well, he said the lead, but like you got you got to specify which one. Are you talking about Thomas Jane Punisher or like which which Punisher are you talking about? I mean, you're because, assuming that people will want to see the Punisher more than once, other than the Netflix. Sorry, Disney Plus show. Hmm. Can't wait for a kid to stumble over that shit. I never saw season two. I think I was so disturbed by the end of season one where he dragged that dude's face across that broken um, mirror. The sound of him screaming like that just kind of like turned my stomach. Like I felt bad for dude. Like, As I, I said, I know it was acting, but fuck it. I felt bad for dude the way he dragged his face across that broken mirror and he just screamed in such horror i just i i I never went back to i never went back to season two i was like i can't do this shit no more as i said i can't wait for little bethany or johnny or apple to be flicking through disney plus and that comes on because they watch something and they're like if you like that show you'll love this See, when his name is Bethany or Apple, I'm pretty sure their parents got on uh, parental controls. Yeah, they they put the parental <laughs> controls like you had to like when, as soon as they added them shits, they you had to when you logged in, you had to re-log in and then say whether you wanted the parental controls. Or not. 
Yeah, right. I said no. Uh, Bethany and Apple, their parents definitely got on parental controls. Absolutely. You name, you name your kid Apple, you a helicopter parent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apple definitely has his parental controls on. If your name is Apple, your parents wake up with either a Bloody Mary or a dry martini just to take the edge off. He said, so, imagine, I'm glad you he said, imagine the recommendation for Luke Cage after watching Encanto. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Rashad. And we talked about this on my show this week because I finally recorded again. Um, did y'all know that Netflix is doing their first NC-17 movie ever? Really? They're doing their first NC-17 movie. It's called Blondie. It's a movie about Marilyn Monroe. <clears throat> oh, so, so she can be in there fucking, I'm guessing. That's the, only, that's the only NC-17 content I can think of that would actually be in that movie, right? Mm, fucking the president, probably. Yeah, like, that's the, only, <laughs> that's the only content I can see that's NC-17 that would actually be in that movie. Now, that... I mean, I mean but it's, let's, let's discuss really the, the idea of what type of fucking would, con, would constitute a NC-17 rating. Because... Just sex. If, that's that's in a lot of Netflix movies, and that's not NC seventeen. So, if, if the person, if if they were fucking for real, like um that one movie, Bound. I don't know um, that one movie. I'm just making up names now. I'm guessing. Um, well, my Muppet movie. Probably a lot of movies. <laughs> well, my Muppet movie and, would be a uh, Requiem for a Dream. So, <laughs> but everything would be Muppets except for the TV host. So it'd just be a bunch of Muppets like getting fucked up on heroin and ODing and shit. Fucked up. Scar kids for life. <laughs> Can you imagine? You talk about stumbling on the Punisher. Can you imagine little Apple stumbling onto an NC seventeen movie while searching through Netflix? Netflix. You know what? Honestly, I got to be real with you. In my more okay. So hi, I'm 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 I'm, I'm Derek. I'm, I've had many, many, many statements get redacted on my shows. So if you know me, you know me. There are times where I can't sleep, and the only thing that's going to work is to to quote the epic show together. Rub one out. So I used to go <laughs> on Netflix and be looking for something to help me out. And Netflix is rather devoid of movies like that off the top of my head. Um, so if this is the first one, then... I don't think that anybody's going to... I don't know. I, I I think that it ain't going to be on there for too long. If motherfuckers lost their shit over that movie about those little girls dancing, they're not going to like the idea of JFK getting some pussy from Marilyn Monroe. Adrian Brody's in this movie, too. Still got real actors in the NC-17 Adrian movie. Brody's in the winning time with uh, the Lakers show on, on uh, HBO Max, which is I love, wonderful. I love his character. Like, his character is... His character's fucking Pat Riley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love like him playing Pat Riley, but like Pat Riley is this like before the cool <laughs> Pat Riley. It's like before the cool Pat Riley, so like he's just kind of weird. Scott had Boogie Riley's Nights. Pussy. He's a travel secretary. If they do a Muppet version of Boogie Nights, Scott, get the fuck out the room. <laughs> I I do not want to see Roller Girl as a Muppet. You, Scott, Scott, do you really want to see a Muppet Dark Diggler dick? Caligula with all Muppets. Fuck the, fuck the humans. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just go all out. A Muppet version of the TV show stars Spartacus. And the only one who's a human <laughs> is Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> you know? I'm not mad at it because she was, she was still bad as fuck in that shit too. Yes, yeah, she was. She was bad as fuck in that shit. And I seen a lot of her. Don't worry. That'll be on, that'll be on another one. Brandon. Can you still can you get that song? No, it's not. Xena Warrior Princess? No, Spartacus. No, oh, it's Spartacus. She oh, played she oh. played in Spartacus and she was bad as a motherfucker in that oh, shit. Oh, okay. Oh, I would rather do Spartacus and do a Power right in a week. Okay. I thought you were saying Xena Warrior Princess. I was gonna have to protest that. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I made the mistake of buying the first season of Hercules. No, I'm good on that too. Larry Juice? Her on Curb Your Enthusiasm, by the way. Uh, uh, I don't I don't know what show you're talking about. <laughs> An all Muppet version of Juice. <laughs> <laughs> I can see, you know what? Two, if you Tupac had to be the one that's real. Tupac has you to be did, real. No, no, the only one that's real is fucking Samuel L. Jackson talking to a Muppet about the snappy nappy dugout. <laughs> <sighs> oh God.
<sighs> I think bo- I think Boys in the Hood will be a waste of Muppet. No, yeah, I mean, you already got a 60-year-old, 20-year-old. Like, what else can you do to stretch your imagination? Truth. Old-ass, face-ass motherfucker. I still can't believe that I didn't realize until I was an adult that that motherfucker was sitting in that chair and coming to America and looked the same age he did in Boys in the Hood. And coming to America, he came out in, like, 1986. And he looked the same age as he did on Boat Trip, which came out in, like, 1995. And he looked the same age as he did in Radio. We, we he had an old radio. face like Greg Oden. We don't talk about radio. I'm sorry. We don't talk about radio. Just don't go into detail about what it's about. I talk about radio. That motherfucker thought he was going to get a, an Academy Award off that shit. And, like, he he got a... Did he win the award for the, the for Show Me the Money? Yes, he did. He got uh, Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Which but radio I mean, he, we were making fun of in Tropic, in Tropic Thunder? Thunder? That and I am Sam, yes. <laughs> That's right. Tropic, 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 Thunder. Tropic Thunder does not get the props it deserves. Okay, no, Brandon, it's one of my go. Five favorite movies of all time. It's just fantastic. It's just the best. Yes. I can watch I watch it at least five or six times a year. And I I swear the first time I saw that shit, I did not know that was Tom Cruise. It wasn't until the credits, I was like, yo, that was fucking Tom Cruise? Yo, Tom Cruise was bugging. Nope, that was Wes Grossman. Tom Cruise was definitely bugging on that film. Robert was Downey that before Jr. or after he was hopping up and down on couches and shit? Because after you bug out like that, you can do whatever the fuck you want for the next six weeks. Pretty much. But, you know, Tom Cruise has always been a weird type. He's on- yeah, he's in- you know what? So... Like I said earlier, we were just in L.A. for an AAU tournament. Kid Awesome and myself and one of the other kids on my team rode down. Uh, We got there a bit early, so our room wasn't ready yet. So we went, and we went to see the Hollywood sign. We went up into the mountains near the Griffin Observatory and took pictures and all that kind of shit. As we're driving around, because it's a circle, you have to drive back down. So as we're driving around where the observatory is, Kid Awesome looks and says, I've seen that before. And I was like, you have? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm getting, I'm like happy. I'm like, okay, my kid is, you know, into landscapes and into, you know, architecture and all that shit. And he's looking at his phone. He's typing something in. And I'm like, cool, you seen it? Yeah, this is the observatory. I'm, they look at the stars and all that. It's really dope. And he pulls up fucking Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> I thought he was gonna pull up Yes Man. <laughs> and, and, and That's why the that games are good for kids. That's he pulled that kids. out, and then literally, as we're driving down Hollywood Boulevard towards the driving the Sunset Strip, he's showing me block for block. This is where the gun shop is. <laughs> this is where this is. This is where this is, and it looks dead on everything that's on the street. He was like, that's where the gun shop is. That's where uh, something or other is. And I, as I was going through, they pointed out something else. And I was like, let me guess. That's where Freckle Bitches is? And he was like, Dad, this is not that game. And I was like, I know. I'll just test him. Freckle Bitches is <laughs> Saints Row. Yeah, I was just, I was just testing him. Yo, a new Saints Row is coming. Yeah, but I, it's, it's, a, it's a complete departure. Um, after the, the bullshit that they made with 4. I'm what 4? Okay the, no, man. I'd rather just play Crackdown. Man, 4 was so fucking over-the-top fun, though. Mm-hmm. And it's honestly, in my opinion, it was better than Crackdown because Crackdown was repetitive. At least this game had those busted-ass uh, Dr. or Professor Ginky's House of Death missions and all that shit. I think I stopped playing 4. I, I loved it. I the, bought it on the Switch. The beginning, of course you did. Um, the beginning, especially when um, when he's in the, like the throwback and he's like walking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that shit, the the whole beginning of that game is fucking hilarious. So it's wait, like, wait, no, we're talking about five because four is the one where at the end they play power and you got to choose if you're gonna save what's her face or if you're gonna change if you're gonna save Kenzie. That was, that was three, and they play power when you jump out of the helicopter at the beginning. They play I need a hero when you have to choose. Right. They all blend together after the second one. <laughs> yeah. After the second one, they all just seem like a literal continuation of each other. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I just didn't I didn't like four. And I'm I'm a fan. I like I like I think two is the best, but I can roll with three and I'll be alright. But four uh, just couldn't do it. Um, I loved four. 
and I still have bounced like my checks did and leave the hoe on my uh, on my phone right now that I can listen to every so often. Bounce like my checks was my shit. I don't know if leave that hoe was my what was like really up there, but bounce like my checks was a bop. Mm-hmm. Bounce like my checks did back in the day. <laughs> What is yeah. this? What are y'all talking about? It's a, That's a from song Saints Row. That, from Saints Row. You know, I never played Saints Row. You should. You should. It looked it looked super shiny on the cover. I was like, this looks weird. It is Too well. The first me. two were like really supposed to be like Grand Theft Auto uh, clones it, or it, Grand the, Theft Auto Light. The second one, they kind of embraced the funny. Yes, and then the third one, they embraced the absurd. Yes. <laughs> Like you, you literally walk around beating people with a dildo bat. Yes, you do. It's a giant purple dick with a handle. That's a thing. And not only, not only are you attacking people with a dildo bat, but the motherfuckers flew when you hit them with said dildo bat. Like it was just like. <laughs> Sammy Sosa hit. They went blocks. <laughs> but the, the fourth one, where you could get the super speed and all that kind of shit, you didn't even need a car by like halfway through the game because you could just sprint from one end of the island to the other and jump like six stories. It was the Matrix. It's the only way I can describe it. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. And, and it was great. It was great. If y'all get a chance, um, don't listen to Scar. Don't listen to Scar. Right now, um, I'm sure... Saints Row is available on every system for like maybe two bucks. Saints Row Four, except except for on the Switch mm. where it's still forty. Is that going to be no, a Unreal Five game? The new one? Okay. Yes. So Johnny Gat's going to look realistic as fuck. It's <laughs> like they they it's like they took Saints Row the new one. It looks like they took Saints Row and they made it for teenagers. You know what I mean? Like all of the characters look like they were designed to appeal to people who play Fortnite. But everything's supposed to appeal to people who play Fortnite now. One of the happiest things I heard in a long time was when uh, Kid Austin came up to me and was like, I don't play Fortnite anymore. I was like, thank God. He was like, I play Valorant now. <laughs> Valorant. Valorant has got, um, that's the that's the game that um, they tried to get your man I show speed about. Um, about being toxic and stuff. Yeah, but they, they found a clip of him going off like I show speed he just kind of has this thing where he just kind of goes off and then he apologizes and then he goes off and then he apologizes but they found a clip from like months ago of him playing Valorant and he was talking to someone he was asking the team how does he heal um and they and they wouldn't respond to him they saying that um healing is only for white people um Ow. And and then he started going off because some chick tried to talk to him and he was like, Is a is, is a bitch talking to me right now? Like is a is like basically oh. saying that a woman shouldn't be speaking to him. But he just oh. went but this was like months ago and then they trying to bring this shit back up so they can try to Wait, get the man canceled. What, what you mean months ago and they trying to bring it back up? Nigga, like go out to the white people who say healing is only for white folks. Go out to them. Don't be like, I'm so angry. Where's a woman? Where's a woman? You! You! Get over here! Funky ass bitch! Okay, I feel better now. Who saw? Who saw? <laughs> like, you didn't say nothing to the white people? Uh, nigga, if you got a platform, if I... You know what? <clears throat> so, there's this dude that we know named Rod. And there are some white guys who fucked with Rod. And Rod literally made it where they lost their goddamn jobs. That's how you deal with the white person who's fucking with you. That absolutely happened. He found them. This was the first <laughs> this the first instance of doxing that I ever fucking knew about. He found them, called their job, emailed their job, was like, your folks said racist stuff on wax about me. Here's the recording. Do you want somebody like that working for you? They lost their job and went on Twitter and whined about how they got fired for saying <laughs> something on their they show. They whined like a motherfucker. Like a <laughs> motherfucker. It was legendary as shit. That's how you deal with white folks who fuck with you. Make them lose their job. Don't go after a woman who ain't did shit to you. She might have been trying to teach you how to heal. And why would you get into the game and not play the tutorial? But he was I saying, like, I, I, you know, shut up. I know how to play this game, but... You don't know how to heal. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It was healing weird. Healing is literally, like... <laughs> that's Video like, game went on once. <laughs> right? 
Like, hey, here's how you look up so I know that your camera works. You look up, you look down. Do you want to keep this? Press A. Next thing, they shoot you. Bow, bow. Oh, you better heal yourself. Here's how you heal. <laughs> Best tutorial in a game, Far Cry Blood Dragon. Remember that game? I've never beaten it. Best tutorial in a game. When that shit starts, it is fucking hilarious. Which is weird that I've never beaten it because I still say that Far Cry 3, 4, 5, and 6 might be the best stretch of video game that I've played in a while. Far Cry 5 especially. Mm -hmm. Because cover your ears if you haven't played it yet, but that's the only game I know where the bad guy fucking wins and there's nothing you can do about it. Three, three is it got your man from Orphan Black in it, right? Yes. Three has the dude from Orphan Black. Four has the one where if you just sit at the table and wait, he'll go conquer the world and then give you the keys to a helicopter. Well, <laughs> yeah, in in five, like it would have been a spoiler if the next game that come out didn't already just. Well, obviously, well, it's a right. post apocalyptic game, so Ooh, that game was weird. That right. game was weird as fuck, but it was beautiful. Like, it was lusciously beautiful. And if you got the uh, gun that shot fucking uh, saws at people, buzz saws at people, and you powered that shit up to full power, you could kill somebody in, like, two hits, a boss or not. It's a, there's a, there's one of those kind of guns in Killing Floor. It's awesome. I used to play that game. Somebody used to play that with me. It was this guy named Scar, and then he just fucking stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so I, played Scar. A, I played a lot on PlayStation. And then me and Chase played a lot on PC, but I played a lot on my own on Xbox. You, yes, I, I thought I you had all three places. somebody else you played with on Xbox as well. Um, I think my cousin played a few times. The cousin that I played a lot of uh, Division with. We played a few times, but mostly I played by myself. Ooh. With randoms. Um, what, you got, what you got, Brandon? Oh, so I was going to do this on our, um, <laughs> our ramble before we talk about Orphan Black tomorrow okay. but since okay. chase is here it's better with three people <laughs> so we found this we found this interesting survey when i was recording last week and i wanted to get y'all opinions on this survey uh -oh. because it's, it's very interesting and it's a survey about sex robots that they ask people many many people okay, okay. this is we went through we i'm not gonna go through everything like we did on our show but i wanted to get y'all opinions on it and now i want to get chase's opinions so okay. Uh, what percentage of people do you think said they would rather have sex with a sex robot than invite someone over for casual sex? Is this, can we get the count of people who go to cons but don't bring the other? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think those 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 numbers are equal. I, I, I would assume so, that right. it would be higher than you would think it would be because there's probably people yeah. that would vote against casual sex more than vote for a sex robot. So the, the actual question was, assume you had no romantic attachments and desired some kind of sexual activity, which of the following activities you would be likely to pursue? You may choose more than one, but they want you to choose your top activity, right? Mm -hmm. So number one at 49% was masturbate manually. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Number two was none at forty two percent was masturbate using a sex toy. Mm. No, number three, however, as the fleshlight was, owner, I understand. Number three, however, was use a sex robot at thirty seven point mm. five percent. Oh, wow. Number four, uh, four was invite someone over for casual sex at thirty point two percent, and number five was hire a sex worker at twenty one percent. So here's the thing that I just don't understand, and I've never, See, I've never understood I, it. Never I understood it. Worker, you spend you spend that money that once, and you don't get to use it again. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, I, I just don't get I mean, it. I mean, that's like, the same honestly, thing with food, right? You spend that money once, and then you don't have no food no more. But y'all can <laughs> fuck for free. Like, just grab lotion and your hand and your dick, and you're done. Come on, dog. We but apparently it's not the same you, if we get a you, highly advanced one. You are a grown ass man. If you still using lotion instead of using like some Astroglide or some real shit, like you you fucked off in the game. <laughs> uh I'm a grown ass man who is paying literally at least five hundred dollars, by the way. Um 
patreon.com slash single simulcast, bobbyandcoffee.com slash sscast. I need to pay for these fucking tournaments. I just paid $477 for a hotel room for two days. I am not buying no fucking Astro Glide, motherfucker. <laughs> it's me it's and Pamela. I'm sure it is. It's also more expensive. And as a black person, I've already got lotion in my house. So the other, some other things in here of interest that y'all will find interesting. Friend is like, I ain't even gonna discuss that. We gonna go back to talk about robot porn. Fifty-seven percent of people wanted to talk and interact with a sophisticated sex robot. What? But they don't know how to talk and interact with women. Get a sex robot so you don't have to talk and interact with her in order to have sex. Like, what are we talking about here? They're talking about they're making they're making like AI ones now. Motherfucker standing in the corner with a fucking sex robot talking about where would I be without you? Fifty point seven percent of people think it's possible to form a genuine romantic attachment to a sex robot. Oh, these are the same motherfuckers who married horses. <laughs> 41% of respondents believe that using a sex robot qualifies as cheating on a romantic partner. I don't not agree. I mean, I guess. I mean, if you have a romantic partner and you're... Okay, so there's times where, yes, it is necessary for you to masturbate. Like, if you can't fucking sleep or your partner's not around or something. But I... If you have a partner who's like, yo, I'm ready to give you all this love, and you're like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to use a robot. They should leave you. If you're <laughs> like, nah, I'm going to use this flashlight, they should divorce you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I got X23. Right? You know hey, I mean? yo. It doesn't have to be, but it doesn't have to be in place of. It could be in addition to. Hey, don't even worry about me, babe. I got, um, I'm going to put this on high power. And uh, in addition to. Yeah, some people got some people have disproportionate sex drives. So one person is that, logic it, in that is that the is that the like excuse people use for cheating? You're like, I have a disproportionate sex drive. This is in addition to what's that nigga said when he cheated on Halle Berry, the singer. He had he he's had a sex addiction. Eric Benet, I have a sex addiction. That's why I fucking cheated on Halle fucking Berry. But Halle Berry probably got some bad pussy, like like the way the dudes treat her. Like David Justice used to beat her ass. That doesn't sound like something. Stop! Stop! stop. Like, Wait, this is your show. Knock yourself the fuck out. <laughs> 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 okay, here we go. Here's Scar over here, victim blaming. Not only right? not not victim blaming, <laughs> not only victim blaming, but also saying David Justice probably used to knock her ass out because she had bad pussy. <laughs> Well, Scar, you're better than that. Are you? Are, are this you is his show. Are you this is his are, show. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Are, would you? Would you hit somebody that got good pussy? I wouldn't hit. Anybody. I wouldn't hit somebody. Period. Scar. If I was in, I try to people, get you to walk this one, one out, those, Scar. If I was one of those people who did that, I don't think that would be. <laughs> a, a, a trigger. I think there's a lot of triggers from people who do that. Holly Berry has gone through so many men. Scar, and it's like no, and she can't keep a man, and it's just like yo, th- there's got to be something there. I'm not no, saying that it's just a bad. Person. Yeah, but see, here's no, a here's a counter argument to your problematic argument. You know, we also had a lot of different. You know, we also had a lot of different uh, partners. Um, Trina and Erica Badu, and all you hear from the men that's been with them is the exact. They're opposite. the best people in the world. It's yeah, the exact opposite. No, Erica Badu. You know who's had a lot of sex partners? A lot of men. Does that mean they have bad dick? It's possible. No, they just got community dick. Like that's a completely different situation. So one is community dick, the other one has to be bad pussy. Do you hear yourself talking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here's another one. Here's another one, Scar. Forty one point nine percent of people say they'd have a threesome with a sex robot in their partner. What? I would take the batteries out. <laughs> I would literally oh my god. No, don't don't bring no don't don't bring no robot to my bed while I'm in the bed. Like if 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 when I like when I can't sleep. So like if if I have a day where I'm an in, I have an insomniac moment and I can't go to bed, I can't sleep. I will sneak into another room to go jack off. I'm not doing it next to my wife. One of the things that um Martin Lawrence said on his "You So Crazy" comedy routine is that his girl wouldn't give him none, so he jacked off on her back. Nah, I'm good. 
I'm good. <laughs> what? But he, but he did also talk. He did talk about like the difference between the the good jerk when ain't nobody home. Yeah, where well, no, you no, just no, watch no, the TV, chilling, no, chilling, chilling, chillin like chillin 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 motherfucker. No, no, no. That was Chris Rock talking about the good jerk. That was that was Chris Rock talking about the oh, good jerk. Oh, nobody. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm talking about the one that where he was watching TV on the couch alone and ended up just falling but, in the but jacket. Dude, and all. If you had a robot in your house, that would be the thing that would keep you up thinking. Yeah, there is a robot in my house. This is what like <laughs> horror movies right? are based on. Y'all not seen? That's a great point. Terminator, like y'all willingly bringing a sex robot in your house, like it can't just. Uh, I own a flashlight, and I don't even use the shit. It's still at my ex's house, actually. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I left the shit there because, like, it's too much. Like, yo, know, I'd rather just, like, you know. Did you say it's too much? Like, you're re- like you're maintaining a relationship with it or some shit? <laughs> like, 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 like cleaning, cleaning it up and making sure that everything oh, is shit. properly and all yeah. of that. Yeah. Like, yeah well, well, the one thing, well, the, first, the first time that thing comes self-aware, it's going to remember you and that you did not ask for permission and it's going to be mad at you. Right. It's glad you brought that up, Chase. So happens, a couple... He's talking about AI and shit. When Skynet happens, your sex robots are going to fucking kill every last one of you dumb motherfuckers. I'm glad you brought that up. So there's a couple more. Uh, 51% of respondents thought that sex robots of the future will make objectification of people worse. So it's going to make people objectify women or men worse because they have sex robots. I would... How? How? I guess so. I guess the idea is that you have this sex robot that can do all the crazy things that you wanted to do, and then you go interact with a person, and you're going to expect the person to do all types of crazy things this is that the you same, had the sex robot do. But this is that same nonsense that they say about dudes who watch a lot of porn. It's the exact same thing they say about dudes who watch a lot of porn, where like your 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 sex relationship with your partner changes because you expect your partner to to behave like the porno chicks, and that's and not expect my partner to spit on my dick when she. <laughs> a lot of people do though. Like you know what? You know what? Let me tell you straight out. If 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 my beloved was giving me head. And she started doing that gag shit on my dick. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to start gagging too. Because I have a very weak constitution. So while she's like, oh, I'm going to be like, oh, 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 oh. Stop that shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh, I'm going to, you're coming? No. Oh, shit. And then I throw up in her hair. Oh, and 2% of people believe that sex robots will reduce sexual assault in the future. So will masturbation. Like this is people, all masturbation. So masturbate, so people, no, see you're con- you're conflating the. Two you're still the fucking with yourself. It's no, it's like, masturbation. It's kind of like, no, no, no. Is masturbation the same as having sex with your wife? No, no. no. I think this is the same way. The that idea is that these sex robots will be human-like. That will feel like humans. That will have insides like humans. That will look like humans. It will be human-like. It won't be like jacking off. I think this is the same thing that they say that would, which are the true um, findings about uh, violent video games, where most people say violent video games cause people to be violent, but really violent video games do the opposite. They're how you get your aggression out. Um, you know, the actual, the real studies showed like, you know, people who play violent Ooh. video games are less violent because they can get all that up out and of if- them. And if they find that, um, you know, so and so mass shooter played violent video games, they were, you know, they were like that anyway. They just happened to play Doom or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. But, anyway. So th- yeah, this ties into that right now. Bring up an analogy. The next one, the next ones is forty four percent of people were interested in visiting a cyber brothel, right? So basically, it's like a brothel of sex robots. You get mm-hmm. they line them all up and you pick and choose them, right? No, and so no. that relates to the. That relates to the previous one. Basically, I want the, the one with the best battery life. <laughs> the, the, thought process, the thought process is, picture the most futuristic version of this, like Westworld, right? If you were someone inclined to have, you know, rapist thoughts, because rape is not about sex, it's about power. Mm-hmm. If you could go to a theme park and you have these women there who are sex robots, but they look like women, and they feel like women, and you can make them do whatever you want, would that reduce actual sexual assault on real live women. That's the thought process behind that. 
I could see how that could work, but the only problem is you have to actually get these people to that place. Yes. And they have to afford it. Even on Westworld, it's only for the rich. (laughs) Right. Did they, yeah, so, I, so, I, so, yeah, I the, only watched the first season of Westworld. Did they ever say where Westworld was? Because at one point they were talking about it was in space or some shit. That's why it was so expensive. They did say it. I forget what they said. I think it was in Colorado. It was in some big, like, land. I think it was Colorado. Okay. I don't remember. But I think Just it was big, Colorado. Big, big ass empty land. Okay. Yeah. But these, um, so, these robots, like, like you said, they, they would be indistinguishable. So it'd be like less. More Blade Runner, less like rosy Jetsons. Yes. <laughs> well, they're like, already who, who, wouldn't fuck, who, wanna fu- who wouldn't want to fuck Rosie with that donk? B- Rosie got a donk. You know what I mean? Like, what are we talking about here? But actually, like, I wouldn't want to go to a cyber brothel because, like, I don't want no you, sex doll. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? I gotta follow. I gotta follow somebody else. Like, you. Well, know they what have I mean? disposable like, parts. Nah, dog. Like, I'm just like no. Like is 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 bad enough way. when you with your lady and you and you know the thought may creep into your head about all of the other times that she had sex and it's just kind of like I don't want to think about this I don't want to think about my, that for my sex robot either and they can even switch <laughs> out parts if you I don't want the return model like no so, so your experience with your significant other is marred because you think about how often they've had sex before you've had sex with them no but I there's there's times no, I just like doing this. There's times where that thought is like, oh, and especially if you know who they've had sex with, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you know, if you know the dude, that's my brothers. Kind of, he's like uh, thinking like a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the the last one, 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 you just got, you got to kind of put it out your mind. You know what I mean? Like, the, oh. the last one I see, I, before I say it, I'm going to qualify it. I see the thought process in this question and what they're trying to say. However, the answer is 100% no. But I'm going to tell you the, the, the results. 35% of people thought that it would be a good idea to create child sex robots. Fuck no. you. No. Fuck you. No. Fuck you. No. Fuck, you. Now, Fuck you. The thought no. process behind no. that. No. 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 50% said they believe that's hey, This a is why you lose y'all show on Twitch. You know that, right? This is where y'all going to get banned. <laughs> no, this is just reading... This ain't, no, this ain't nothing wrong. We read it. But the idea behind it we have, is that... We have four viewers. And they, we are. <laughs> the idea behind it is that if you gave a pedophile we have four a viewers child sex I'm robot one. that was real like, they wouldn't mess with real life children. That's the thought process behind it. But all this thought process is like, like a lot of these are based on like, how would are we going to fix bad people? Like, they're, yes. they're like not going to be like, oh... Well, I'm gonna do the thing that helps me, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like we give them the placebo, like you know. What I mean, like fuck out of here. Like, no, I think I think the child. Thing, is. I think the the child thing is going a little bit too fucking far because, like, what, like you know, like okay, I'm about to sound real Republican right now. Once you start making children, like what's what's next? Animals? You know what I mean? Like, at at what point do you stop? You know what I mean? There has to but be. The idea, see, but that's a good question because the idea behind that is theory was true, right? Let's just go for the argument that this theory works. The idea behind it is if you got people who are into bestiality, they're not actually doing that to animals. They're doing it to fake robots. If you got people who can't control their urges for children, they're not doing it to actual children. They're doing it to robots. If you got people who are, are hell-bent on overpowering women for the sensation that they get out of rape, they're not doing it to actual real life women. They're doing well, it to so robots. On your first show back for Why So Serious, you busted out these facts and y'all had a conversation about this shit for how long? Uh, every episode we talk about, every episode ends on a robot story. On a this robot. Just happened to, this just happened to be the robot story of the week. <laughs> we, sometimes we talk about robots that are making deliveries. You probably got that in Sacramento, but I, I know they got. The robots, in, and back on the East Coast, they had the robots that would deliver your stuff, deliver your food. They ride down the street, deliver your pizza and stuff. And they're so much more efficient. And so, you know, we have all types of robots. So we have AI stories because Mike is pro AI. <laughs> we the lost, rest of us aren't. We, we lost a viewer. We lost one of the four. <laughs> <laughs> we lost back. one of the four. Uh- <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, that's what happened. So so what y'all so y'all wouldn't try one? Not even once. No. I don't see the need for it. For me personally, no. Um is there's no need for it. Like I'm married, fam. I, 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 what I, I don't what I do now works. Like, you know, right? like I don't think I need anything more than what I do now. So like you know what I mean? There's you know, the, you get some extra this, so Rashani, I know you've seen this on extra garden and box of tissues and you it's, straight. Though. When people when you ever see the dudes get on Twitter and be like, the women trying to get rid of us, look at all these sex toys that they have. And then what do people say? The people say, Hey, the sex toys is not your enemy, it's your friend. Yeah, that's and what I tell them. I tell them all to get a fucking womanizer. The sex toys is not your enemy, it's your friend. Womanizer well, can change y'all's goddamn lives, gentlemen. I'm telling you. Get a womanizer, apply pressure, sit back and watch. Very highly of the road. And, uh, and here's the other thing that was interesting. The assumption is that people always think of men with women sex toys. Like, that's the standard. Like, that's just the default of what people picture. Like, you know, this uh, white, I mean, big titted sex toy. But Superhead so put your boy um, Eddie Winslow on blast, and he had the he had the other one. He had, he, she, she was talking about um, when he broke up with her um, that he left his uh, he left his dildo at her house and she pulled she pulled it up and she like waved it at the camera. She was like, you know me. I don't need a fucking dildo this small. Um. <laughs> yeah, so that's what they say. We end up talking about how we end up talking about how like Reed Richards is probably the person everybody in the Marvel Universe wants to fuck. And so imagine if you had women with real life male sex toys. With that are large and can hit the spot every time and never get tired and don't pre ejaculate. Like, I feel like women would probably like that better than we would. Don't be talking down to my people, dog. <laughs> but Reed Richards always use that fact. Reed Richards gets all the women, all of them. Does he, though? He drives Sue crazy and she ain't never left him. That's probably why. That's because he can stretch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He just, he just, he just fill up the cavity. You know what I mean? Like just <laughs> put that in the air, and fill that up, and then let me move it a little bit. He, he always hitting the spot. Like it's always in there every it's time. Always, every time he always, he right there. He on time. That's what I'm saying. Race to go. <laughs> but like, a ain't part of the comics about Reed Richards is the fact that he gets so involved with his science. He, he kind of ignores Sue for long stretches of time. <laughs> yes, that's my point. That's what I'm saying. But when yeah, he comes back, left. she never left. When, when he comes back, <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth the wait. They actually did. They actually had a panel one time in a book where they didn't actually show them having sex. But they, it was like they finished, and it, and then Sue said something about, "Oh, you know what type of power my husband has?" Or something like that. She made some type of comment like that. But you would think that you know the thing probably got some things going on because he's always rock solid. You know what I mean? Uh. Rashad, he didn't like that one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm literally groaning because that was a horrible joke. <laughs> I don't think that was a joke. If it wasn't, then that's even worse. He is rock <laughs> solid. I don't think the thing can have sex with a person, a human. He is married, though, in the comic books currently to a, okay. a real live person. Oh, you guys want to hear my theory? Uh, and Brandon, I'm sure you've already read this comic, but my theory is that... so. At this point in time, I can spoil No Way Home, right? I mean, yeah, it's been like four months. <laughs> How nobody you, is supposed to remember who uh, Peter Parker is, and he's lost his friends and everything, because that was the only way they could stop the uh, pill from coming through the uh, portals from the other universe and whatnot. Okay, cool, whatever. My thought is it's going to be just like um, in The Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man, where... Bruce Banner didn't remember who Peter Parker was, but Hulk remembered who Peter Parker was because they're two separate people. And so, yeah, but, they're still Peter. but yeah, I'm thinking Bruce Banner is going to be the, or the Hulk's going to be the one to help him get his life back. It depends on which one he was at the time when all of this happened. That's a, that's a, that's an idea. Mm-hmm. And no, that it's was not good an because idea. It, please, it's it, a bad idea. Because okay, the spell like to make everyone in the universe forget who Peter Parker is. Mm-hmm. So the Hulk still exists, even if he's not present. You do know so this happened in know. the comic, right? Yeah, one more day. So why couldn't it happen in the movie? Because the MCU changes everything. But it's happened before, so you're poo-pooing something that literally happened in Marvel lore. That's why it wouldn't happen. Because I said it. 
No, that's why. I, no, I'm saying that's why it wouldn't happen. Because they did it before. Yeah, because people didn't like One More Day. They hated it. But She Hulk doesn't have those issues because she's usually in her She Hulk form, right? In the she doesn't books, go back. Yeah. And, she doesn't go back and forth. So basically, we're gonna see Tatiana Maslany mostly green, right? In the books, yes. But I don't know how they're gonna do it in TV show. But yeah, she's mostly just green. Especially because, like you know, I I never thought of. She Hulk is being that small. I wonder how they're gonna play that. You didn't see the preview? They make her big. Uh, I, I, did not, I did not see the preview, but yeah, they um, have like a little glimpse of her. She's big CGI. <laughs> she got to do the. Uh, she got to do the thing that um, that um, that Thanos did, where you see when they recorded. Uh, Thanos, because Thanos is so much taller than Josh Brolin, he was wearing like some sort of thing with like a Thanos uh, picture, <laughs> like where his head was above his head, so they knew where to look when talking to him. <laughs> it was always when they casted her. I I didn't watch Orphan Black, so I didn't know. But I looked her up, and I was like, I was surprised they cast someone that small. But they probably cast somebody who can do the range, as opposed to like someone who has the physical build. Of Jennifer Walters, because I mean they could just CG the shit the same way they do with Hulk now. It'll be fine as long as the, as long as the CG is actually pretty decent. It shouldn't be a problem. All right, so we just did a whole bunch of riffing and we didn't actually get into consumption at all. I think we you know we've already done like a, a hour and a half. Um, so we're just gonna do what we've been playing. I think that'll be you know, and then we can wrap this thing up. Uh, we'll we'll start. Well, I mean. Everybody knows what I've been playing. I've only really been playing Live 19 still. I'm still playing Live 19 with the homies, and we're having a blast. Hold on. NBA Live? Yes. I love that game. <laughs> That's fascinating. Because, because I, I, don't, I, don't feel, I don't feel any pressure when playing that game. Um, you, you, you don't have the VC system, and they don't start you as so low of a character that you feel the need to actually pay anything extra. And even if you wanted to, you can't. Yeah, I remember um, somebody yeah. else saying like, um, like they when they play a basketball game or any kind of a game, especially like a basketball game, they don't want to go out there and play like they play in real life. They want <laughs> to play like an NBA player. <laughs> It's, it's, it's increasingly stupid that they would take somebody who they want you to believe is the best player in high school and the kid can't make a goddamn layup. Exactly. <laughs> it makes no sense. And then because they start you so low. Um, at, least, at least in live, they start you off and your character is like in their 70s um, as far as like their total overall. And you gain levels pretty quick and you can't pay to upgrade your character. You just play the game and you can upgrade your character. You you can still go online and you can still find the game. Um, me, my homeboy, and Scott have been out there, uh, out there in these streets getting our ass whooped online. Um, but the shit is still fun. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just cool. It's just cool shit. And it's just it's, stupid, man. It's like, they're literally the announcers are literally in, in 2K talking about how your dad is an NBA legend and you're it's, you're going to be an NBA legend. This kid has a lot of potential. Yeah. While you miss six a- laps and airball five jump shots and then brick six free throws. Right, your your dad is a is your dad is a basketball legend, but it's the nigga from Grey's Anatomy. You know what I mean? Like no matter what the character <laughs> you pick, no matter what. Uh, what's his name? Jesse. Jesse. What? Jesse Williams. Williams. Yeah. No matter which character you pick, no matter what your character looks like, you can pick the Lily White dude. Jesse Williams is your dad. I mean, that's plausible. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. That's like playing a shooter, and then you go in there like and like you've never shot a weapon in your life. It's mm-hmm. like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it, you have to learn bad. how to hold the gun. <laughs> it's just it's just as bad as the Spike Lee one because always that like no matter which character you created, the black lady was always your twin. <laughs> like, <laughs> and she didn't change at all like they didn't change nothing about her they didn't do the thing that they do on Andromeda where like you create your character and you can press a button and, and they all the, make, if they wanted make that an story. opposite sex version of your character the only thing they had to do is just not make it a twin it was just my sister you could assume be like I can role play this as I was adopted or whatever but yeah, right. they, they said twin so that just Makes it you're like I can't get out of this. It's it's exactly. <laughs> that's that's me, Rashani. What you got? 
planet right now. Kirby in the um, Forgotten Land is, that is the big, literally... Is that the Big Mouth one? Yep, and it's literally perfect. Now, this comes from somebody who played the last Yoshi uh, game as well on the Switch and thought it was perfect. And folks were like, that's a kid's game. I don't give a fuck. All y'all Kirby's hardcore motherfuckers just... out there playing Elden Ring and all that kind of shit, y'all stick with y'all shit. Y'all have fun with that. Y'all have fun struggling to beat the first fucking character you run into in a game. Kirby for and the Forgotten Land is wonderful. Well, Kirby's like, always been like, even since the Game Boy, just been like, dude, this is super fun. I even like put uh, my son on the 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 Dreamland or whatever the Game Boy one. He was like, I love this game. I was like, because mm-hmm. fun is fun. It's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it, it's the music is excellent. You know how I feel about jazz. I feel about jazz the same way Scar feels about uh, band music. The gameplay is wonderful. <laughs> it's 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 the concept is splendid. Like it's it's delightfully bizarre. There's a ton of different weapons you could have. The characters are funny. It's just it's a blast. It's literally a blast and. Since it's on the Switch, I can play it whenever I want to. And so I take it to work. I take it when I'm going to pick up my son from school. It's excellent. Uh, it is. But, I advise everybody to try it out. But Big Mouth Mode is a terrible name for it. <laughs> you know, I wish they could have thought of something different to call it. But when you play it, there's so many different things that he's... It, it's not like, okay, he ate a car. Now for the rest of the game, he's going to be attacking people with cars. No, you, you become a car to get through one small section and then you spit the car out before you can go to the next level and then you go back to eating somebody uh the the meta knight and getting his sword and i don't know i'm just it's it's a lot more um it's a lot deeper than i thought it was going to be you know like with a lot of these games you would think okay there's going to be like five six levels with like four different worlds and or f- four or five different worlds with five or six levels in each one and that's not the case like i've been playing this game steadily since march 19th maybe march 20th and i think i might be 50 percent of the way done with it and i'm i'm like trying to 100 percent it because you can go back and do different things in each level to get another or rescue another uh item that you need to get I would recommend this. I would. If you have kids, if you don't have kids, if you don't want to, if you want a game that has great music and where you don't have to stretch yourself out about shit, this is fun. Plus, it has a co-op mode. So if you do have a kid, you can actually give them access to the second player and they can play as one of the Waddle Dees, whatever the fuck those are. Um, And they'll have fun, too. Like, it's 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 I give it a very high uh, regards, honestly. Nice. That's the only thing you've been playing? Um, Death's Door. I've heard great things about that. That game is pretty. It, it's 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 a... Uh, uh, what's those hard-ass games that I was just talking about? It's a light version of those, but it's not as difficult. It's more like a Zelda game. So and it's, like, it's about... I've never played Zelda. I don't play Nintendo games. Like, I don't... I own a Switch, but I don't... The only Nintendo game I own is Mario Kart. How do you not have Breath of the Wild? It's like the best game they made on the Switch. I have never played a Zelda game. I didn't know Breath of the Wild is so good that it came out when the right around the time the Switch came out, right? It's still sixty dollars today. That's all Nintendo games. All Nintendo games. Those shits do not depreciate. When I when I got when I bought my Switch, I bought Mario Kart. I bought a used Mario Kart. That bitch was fifty (laughs) seven. So I, you know, I, I know that you, I, I, I literally know that you don't play Zelda, and it still makes me mad whenever you say you don't play Zelda. I don't know why. Like I've like, known this for years that you don't play Zelda. Like we've talked about this on multiple shows that you don't play Zelda, and yet every time is like the first time. <laughs> and I, and I, I now because uh, because of buying that um the Switch it, it right before Christmas. I now own Smash Brothers, but I've never played a Smash Brothers game. Who's next? Yeah, make every time like your first time. That's that's where we are right now. Yeah, that that should be. Uh, it's supposed to be a good thing, right? <laughs> I yeah. Uh, I'll I, go. Yeah, go ahead, man. Oh no, go ahead, Chase. You go ahead. Well, I've just been playing one thing. It's just been Destiny. Like the new expansion. Like like I said before, the uh, the whole Did thing. What now? 
Oh you no, finish that? no, because um, I'll do when I'm playing by myself. I just mostly just do random stuff because I just said that the story, the actual story missions, I'm just going to play with my wife, and so we um we've been slowly going through that, and it's a lot meteor, man. Like like I said before, meteor I was, man, <laughs> meteor man. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. When he said that, I immediately thought of drug dealing people. <laughs> Out of my way, crack boy. Crack boy. <laughs> yeah, crack boy. Um, I just beat Horizon Forbidden West, which was fantastic. Just mm-hmm. a fantastic game. Just great. Um, I watched a. I watched someone. I, I I watched one of those everything great about for, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, so I, I I know what the story is, but I'll never play those games. Man, it's just a it's just a great game. I like that was fantastic. Um, I'm replaying the Mass Effect trilogy. I'm on Mass Effect Two, mm-hmm. uh, so that's exciting. Uh, I'm also been playing Sifu, but it's annoying that because game it's so is hard. hard as fuck. But it's so much oh. fun. Right, I, I heard dude, I'm for on people the first who like still, and I'm 80. <laughs> yeah, I heard that no pe- for people who no like brawlers, that yeah, is like I the am, ultimate. I am not fucking joking. I'm on the first. Le- I'm not on the first level. I'm like, I've run down the hallway. I fought the big fat dude. I've made it into the next part of that. Maybe I'm in the second part now. I think I might have beat the dude in the that turns in the 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 botany guy. I might have beaten him. Yes. But by the time I finished beating him, I was at least 61 years old, and it went okay. downhill from there. I was watching Chris Smoove play that today, but he was playing a modded version where you're Neo and all of the all of the enemies are Agent Smith. Why would you mod that game? It's so fucking beautiful. It, it, it's a, and he's going through, it's about an hour, he's going through no deaths, no deaths, he's trying to finish the game at age 20. Oh, I God. finished... I finished the first one at like twenty six. I finished the second one at thirty six. But that third one, I mean, no, I finished the second one. I started the second one. Second one, third one. I don't know. One of the, the one of them got all the way to seventy, and I'm like, do I need to start back over to finish this one younger? Because I couldn't get through it. But that reminds me, every video game where I can choose between a man or a woman, I always pick a woman, and I always, if I can make them black, I always make it a black woman. Just so when I stream or if I share my game, people get to see a black woman on my, there. So I always do that. My favorite play every game. Through, my favorite playthrough of Saints Row the Third. I made a, I made a fat black woman, and she was amazing. I loved her. And I'm also playing um, No Man's Sky, which is like a completely different game than when it first came out. They got Iron Man suits now. You can play multiplayer with your friends up to like ten people. You can find out where they are. You can get, like, space colonies. Like, it's just insane. They got cars. They got underwater submarines. They got sea monsters now. Like, it's insane. Like, all these different artillery. It's, it's, like a, it's like a whole new game. I got it. I was like, yo, what is this? This is not the game I played. It's underwater submarine an oxymoron or an un, un, unneeded addition. Yes, it is. It is. They have submarines. And so, yeah, I'm playing No Man's Sky and... I downloaded the PS5 version of Cyberpunk because apparently they added like new features and stuff to it. Brought the price so, down to like three bucks. Yeah, it's five dollars. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm gonna play through that uh, when I get done Mass Effect because I think I'm about to get seafood a break because I can't. I don't feel like starting over every time, but it's so much fun. The, it is. the combat style in that game is so unique that it's it's really fun. It's really fun to play. I was playing Madden. Here's the thing with Madden. Like, I'm in a Madden league uh, for, like, the past three years, and the game is so bad, but I just play it because of the competition because it's, like, a competitive franchise where we play multiple years. Everyone has a team. Like, you trade. You do. We have rules. It's, like, a whole thing, right? It's and so, about, about that life, too. And, but, and I, you know, I'm pretty good at it. Like, every year I'm one of the best players, highly ranked players in Madden, but it's so annoying because it's a terrible game. And so I get so fucked. Like, if you watch my streams, I'm, like, screaming and angry. And by the end of the game, I'm just – I'm literally angry. And I just say, I can't do this. I always end up quitting. Like, they're still going. They're on, like, year nine. I I won – so here's the funny thing. Last Madden, I won three Super Bowls in the league, which was great. Somebody won six, though. But I won three. 
but this year, I made it to like the AFC Championship game, kept losing, and kept losing, because I ended up starting with the Jaguars. Because I, I always tell people, if you're one of the better players, you should pick one of the worst teams to make it fair. But sometimes Thank the best bro. players in our league like to pick the best teams so that they can just win. I'm like, yo, that's not fun. That's kind of fucked up. But anyway, I started with the Jags, who suck. I built them up. And, and at some point, I just got tired of playing Madden. I was like, I'm done. But out of respect for the people who run the league, I was like, I'm going to finish this season. This is like week six. I was three and three. They was making fun of me or whatever. I won every single game the rest of the season, then won the Super Bowl and just quit the league. And I haven't come back. And it feels so great to play video games and not be frustrated because Madden drives me insane because it's just a horrible, horrible game that EA just knows that everyone's going to buy it because it's the only NFL game you can play. So they don't care about making it good because the people are going to buy it anyway because they want to play NFL football. Yeah, that's how uh, it felt like when I was playing Call of Duty like back in, I think it was like Black Ops 2. Like the, like the moment it like dawned on me is when I was playing with my brother and I was mad the entire time. He was like, dude, you are so angry right now. And you're like 20 and 3. He was like, because I'm trying to do the stupid challenge. and, and blah, 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 Because I'm trying to get... And I was like, okay, I'm doing really well and I'm still mad. I think I need to quit this game. And other than like playing with, like doing some zombies. And I, th- I think I played Black Ops 4, or not Black Ops, it was 3 a little bit. But it it wasn't anywhere near like a competitive mode. So that's pretty much the last time I was really yeah. competitive in game. You need to play some team training in Black Ops, or uh, if you have ghosts, you can do that squads mode. I really like squads. I just named all of my characters after Ender's Game characters, and that was fun. <laughs> so that's that's what that's what I'm playing. But yeah, Madden, and then Madden is ultra frustrating because like I played Division One football. Like I understand what people are supposed to do. Like I play free safety. It's like I know a free safety's responsibility on cover three or cover two or two man under or cover four or cover like I know what they're supposed to do. And so I'm playing and expecting my free safety to do that thing. And they never do that thing. So you have to like manually control them because they never do that thing. It's very frustrating. Sounds about right. You know you better watch out. Some girls, some girls are only about that thing, that thing, that thing. I don't know where this came from, but okay. Oh, I guess he said that thing. Well, this has been a rolling start, so this is sarcasm. Oh yeah, we never we never <laughs> said that at all. <laughs> I figured I would just sum all of this stuff up at the end. <laughs> yeah, did y'all see what John Oliver did? Who? John Oliver. Did y'all see what he did? The Daily Show guy. It's John Oliver. You don't know last week tonight? Oh no. He did a segment on like data privacy, like cookies and stuff, and how like. People, everybody's collecting your data and the internet and the government, everybody's collecting your data and then they're selling it and selling it all. And there was like some really fucked up shit. Like there was a there was a Muslim prayer app, right, that tells you when you should pray, like what time of days you're supposed to pray. And then they were selling, they were selling, they sold their data to a data broker. And they didn't know this, the person who made the app didn't know this, but they sold it to a data broker. And then the data broker sold that information to the federal government that they knew all this information on like Muslim people, like wild shit. And so... John Oliver went to a bunch of data brokers and got data on 45 older year old white men within five miles of the U.S. Capitol. And they put out these like ads of like Ted Cruz, um, like uh, exotic writing. What's it called? Rashani, exotic, what's book called? It's called exotic, fan fiction, exotic fan fiction. They had like, can you vote twice? And like something about marriage issues. And he did it within like a three mile radius of the Capitol. And then he could track people. And basically the data allows you to track where people go, where their cell phones ping. So he could like ping people who were in the Capitol and then went like went to other places that senators hung out and then went to this other place that senators hung out. And then it, and then it gives you all this other data about them, like what they search for on the Internet, things that they bought, what they look up for, what porn they look up, like all this other stuff. And then you can use that data to backtrack to figure out who it is. And he's like, yeah, all this should be le- illegal, but it's not illegal. And we've re-identified who these people are and what they're looking up. And we have it right here in this box because it's not illegal because you can do that through through data farming, which is a wild thing. So I thought that was kind of funny. 
super wild. I, I I pulled it up. I started it, but I didn't actually finish it. I only watched like maybe about ten seconds. Then the phone rang at work, so rang at work. So I never actually got through it. Uh, but I, I, I I usually watch that on Mondays after you know after I watch Winning Time and after I watch uh, Bo Show. I watched a Vice mm-hmm. video about the redneck rave. Only you would be interested in such things. What is that? Like a it's, rave party? It's redneck? like. It's like a super crazy, like, like people are like mudslinging and like people and like getting drunk on this like farm in Kentucky. And like last year, like some dude got impaled when he was on the AT. What? It's like crazy shit. What? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was an accident and like he actually survived, but they had to take out some of his lower intestines. But, um, but yeah, it's like the craziest fucking drunk party of all time, basically. Oh yeah, I started watching Righteous Gemstones. So great! I, 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 I saw the preview. I saw the preview for that, and that looked great. I really do enjoy that show. I'm mad you didn't tell me about it. Well, the last show I told you about, you spent the next five to six weeks binging, and I got scared to fall into <laughs> yeah. another rabbit hole. And I am binging it, but yes, because I tell him. The see, the thing is, about. y'all, I tell him about good shows when it's not for another one. When it's just. Day to day life, I tell him about great shit. Like Playmaker, the best thing you ever told me no, about like Succession. Succession. Mm, the best. That's the best thing you ever told me about as far as TV. As it should be, it's an excellent show. Speaking of, speaking of another one, I already watched the, the next two episodes. Man, of course you did. Man, right. I'm gonna rewatch them like the day that we do the show. I'm gonna rewatch that episode. But man, listen, greatness. Is what coming. we're listening. Greatness is coming. <laughs> It is fucking fantastic. I'm sorry. I, I just it's just so fucking fantastic. And like what's happening I can't speak on it, but it's awesome. So they're inventing the PlayStation. <laughs> is it better than when you found out that, that kid who's been telling you his uncle worked in Nintendo really did have an uncle that worked in Nintendo? <laughs> I don't think I ever had one of those. Man, I had like living in Washington. Everybody had an uncle who worked at Nintendo. Around here, everybody has knows someone that works at Epic Games. So. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Xbox Series X are in stock now. Anybody wants to buy one? You can buy one and send it to me, Brandon. I already, bought, the Xbox. I already bought the S. The S is everywhere. Yeah. But yeah. S is pretty decent, though. Like, uh, the X has been know, in stock was, for like two weeks I, now. I had an X... On, I went to Amazon. I had it in my basket. I was actually, I checked out with it. I had the, um, I was putting in my credit card information and everything. And then I stopped and I was like, what the fuck am I going to play on this? What do I literally need to be <laughs> playing on this right now? And I was so mad that my mind thought of that. But then I, I, I couldn't be mad at myself. Like, I was like, I don't have anything that's like pressing me where I need this system right now. Like, I don't think that either of the new systems has a must-buy game yet. When I bought the PlayStation... When I bought the PlayStation... Shut the fuck up. When I bought the PlayStation... I've already beat this shit, but I I have it on my PC. Why would I get it to beat it? No. No. Once you beat... Have you seen Hades? Never played it. Okay, so Hades wouldn't look different in 4K? It's an isometric roguelite. <laughs> Forbidden and then in 4K ain't gonna make it do nothing but make the fire in the background look different. But honestly, the game that made me have to get a PlayStation 4 was when they came out with Spider Man for the PlayStation. Uh, for the PlayStation that, 5, that I was thought cool. it was gonna be Ratchet and Clank. I thought it was gonna be that, but it, it it's not. There's nothing really just moving me. Well, well, I think now it, amazing. Oh, I think now it's gonna change because I, I thought I always. Well, what makes a generation? Some people think it's like when they stop play- making games, and that is completely untrue. Because then be like, oh, the PS2 generation ended in 2014. No, it didn't. The mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> the I would say instead of saying you know graphics card generations or console generations, I think it's actually Unreal versions. So now, mm-hmm. like Unreal Four. Xbox One, PS4, Unreal 3, 360, PS3. Now Unreal 5 is out. Now we're actually going to see PS5 and Series mm-hmm. X. <clears throat> I, really do love the fact, I really do love the fact that they called their uh, system a game that most people 
who play these new consoles likely have never even played before. That's a great point, uh, Chase. And here's the other thing. I was always someone who was like, oh, you know, all HD TVs are the same. Who cares? Play video games on it. It all looks the same. I had got a bonus from my job, and I bought a OLED TV, an OLED TV, and I put it in my office, and I put the PlayStation 5 on it, and I played a game at 4K, 60 frames per second, on an OLED TV, and I said, oh, yeah, there's absolutely a difference for this. And the TV I have can do up to 120 frames per second at 4K, but it's like five games that can do 4K at 120 frames per second, and I don't play any of them. They're like Call of Duty, some other shooting games that I don't play. But I imagine it looks amazing on there. But that's, to Rashani's point, like, you know, if you're into that, it's great. Yeah, but, like, that's the thing, and I think it's harder to go back you're not going to really notice mm-hmm. it when you go forward as much as when you go back. Because, like, when I'm playing, I, I I have a 1440 monitor, so I don't do 4K. Yes. But the, um, so at Destiny 2, 1440 Ultra graphics, getting 144 frames per second. And then when I went and helped my son out on the P- PS4, it almost made me nauseous. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Same thing. Yeah. I only play fighting games before I got the PS5 on my PC because once you play it on that high frame rate, you actually notice the difference. Yeah, I've, it, I, I, I've never been a graphics whore and I've never cared about frames uh, except for that one time when I tried to play on my computer and I tried to play Division 2 and the moment I start moving, it turns into a fucking flip book because the frames drop into the teens. Um <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I've never paid attention to frames or any of that shit. What but have it? you played at 144 frames, 144 hertz? I have played. I've played games that have been higher than 60. Oh, but but we're just, just getting. I just don't care. I just don't. It just doesn't make a difference to me. I just. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. But like Chase said, if you play that for a while, then you go back, you will notice the difference. Okay. Yeah. And you might not, have, even if it's said, if you're playing a game on your computer and it said you're getting 90 frames, you're probably still getting six, seeing 60 frames because I'm not sure if your your monitor is over 60 hertz or not. Mm-hmm. It's probably not. My, my shit is. My, I've had this thing for a while. Yeah, mine's is like yours, Chase. I have a 1440, 144, one millisecond um, response time. Mm-hmm. And when I play one player games, I don't even play them on my console like i can't buy it on my console i mean i could but i don't because it's like why (laughs) yep rich niggas niggas and niggas who buy shit when they get their taxes hey rich i built my pc sir from scratch yeah he's not rich he's just fucking brilliant you don't bet to be brilliant you can build one everyone this channel can build a pc i probably just follow youtube tv (laughs) youtube video which is what i did yeah, even the scariest, the scariest part for me would be putting in a processor. But once I did it, I was like, actually, this is scary at all. Like, you just line the triangle up with the triangle and put the clip down. And, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so simple. It saves but, a lot of money if you do that. And especially if you take your time and you buy, like, the parts when they go on sale. Mm-hmm. You can get some really good deals and save a whole bunch of money. And then, and the good thing about building a custom PC is it lasts. Like, mine's has been going on for, like, Six years now, like it'll, it'll probably keep going because my graphics card can do 8K. So nothing's in 8K now, so I can just keep going. Right, right. Mm-hmm. No reason why we'll I'm get you on. Buying. We'll get you on board, Scar. No, this is 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 about paying for it. It's not about whether I would actually use it. It's about paying for it. <laughs> um, I think that's it. We just we just did just short of two hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our first time. Yeah. Well, um, thank both of you gentlemen. Um, I'm, I'm, of course, like Turner Oswald, we do this twice a week, most weeks, when Rashadi doesn't have anything else pressing. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so, sending me back to the office was the worst fucking thing that could have ever happened in the history of the world. Yeah, that's that sucks. It, it's the worst thing for our show. Did y'all see Sonic yet? I didn't mean to cut you off, Scar. No, I'm gonna go see it tonight, yet. actually. Never. Never, I will never, I will never waste money on that shit. Fuck no, okay. I hate okay. the idea of Sonic. Okay, cool, cool. You also have literally never played Zelda, so 
I hate how the fuck idea. Of how the fuck are we getting you your opinion on video games? You have, <laughs> you, what the, why do you have a video game show, fam? Like seriously, you have because never I'm, played Zelda. I'm an Xbox. You have never played Zelda. I'm one of the cornerstones of video games. The cornerstones of video games are as follows. These are un. These are un. Immutable. These are undisputable cornerstones of video games. If I'm wrong, Brandon and Chase, please let me know. The four cornerstones of video games are as follows. Super Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Grand Theft Auto. Each one, each, one is, each one is that because it brought a different genre of game for people to build off of. I would put Madden in that. I have hated Nintendo since Shaq Fu. <laughs> well, Shaq, Shaq Fu and Shaq Fu in Mortal Kombat um, made me stop using my Super Nintendo, and I, I, I have the 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 next time I actually bought anything Nintendo for myself. Now I bought a Wii for the home, um, you know, bought my bought my daughter DSs and stuff like that, but nothing specifically for me until I bought the Switch. But I bought the Switch for portability, not for Nintendo games. I for a long been- time I didn't want to be I didn't want to get a Switch because I got tired of getting the one when I was a kid. Yeah. The- <laughs> oh, and my oh, joke was bad. No, my that's joke a good was bad. one. Oh, that fuck that. My joke was bad. Fuck that shit. Horn thyself. Um, <laughs> um, um, that was better yeah. than your thing joke. <laughs> well, the one thing I was about to say is like, back when like the 64 came out and the PS1, like, that pretty much cemented Nintendo to be what they are now as like, not one of the major players, but they're still got their main core audience, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> If I you look the 64 outside of a Walmart display. Well, well the thing is the 64 when you look back on like you say, "Oh, I'm going to emulate some Mario 64." It holds up in a way that's like, "Oh, it's pretty. It's the colors pop and stuff and it still looks like a Mario ass game." You know what I mean? But the PS 64s, we all had PlayStations by the Right, but the PlayStation was pushing things towards realism. But it looked ugly as fuck. But it, it had to be ugly as fuck to make that risk to be ugly to push it towards modern gaming. You know what I mean? You you look at a PS One game now, and you're like, holy shit, this looks bad. Yeah, but it's just like it's just like all the games where you you played them when you were younger, and you were like, man, this looks real. <laughs> and then you go back and look at it, you're like, whoa. I but it had, it had they had the risk being ugly to push it towards what we have now if they didn't if they didn't risk being ugly we would still be playing mario 64 looking games today outside of this that's a good point Mm -hmm. i've I've never played mario 64 so i can't say one way or the other i did play two days ago i did play smackdown here comes the pain which was fun i played um battle for new york or fight for new york I, I remember when we remember when we uh, were talking about that on the um, on the Dream Team, and I downloaded that emulator. Mm-hmm. I played it on my PC. That was fun as fuck for like a good fifteen minutes. And, and then was, you, <laughs> then it was like I'm done here. Yeah, I'm done on these streets. I thought that that game was gonna sustain me, and it was a quick "What the fuck is this bullshit?" <laughs> that just happened to me. That's what that's what every moment was like. Why can't I? Why why can't I? Why why fuck that shit? No, you know I can tell you where where your wall typically is when you go back and play that after a long time. Sean Paul, mm-hmm. that nigga Sean Paul forever because of that game. <laughs> Do y'all think they're bringing back the Death Jam fighting game like they claim no. to be? No, I think that if uh, if Aki does another game, they're going to do AEW. AEW's already got a game in the works. It's yeah, I think Aki's doing it because I mean, are all of those people on oh, Jax? Is that is that the company Jax or was it Aki? Let me see. I, I think every everybody who was in that game was on Violator Management. Are all of those people in one place anymore? No, some of them are dead. Probably, that's probably how you spell good. Aki, Rishani. Aki. Oh no! It says it's being made by a Japanese studio Yuki Y U K E. Oh, okay, so they're they're being made by the folks who made SmackDown. Here comes the pain. Hmm. 
No, that was THQ. THQ did all of those games. Check. Yuki did the. Uh, yeah, they, did, did, the, they, they were the actual developer. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, if you look at their. Is it sometimes their, to where, like, you look they at made, a, They made my favorite wrestling games, the SmackDown versus Raw games. SmackDown vs. Raw 07 was my shit, son. No Mercy was, was the best wrestling game of all time, but just, you wouldn't know because you didn't fucking play Nintendo. I yeah, would just create I would create a whole bunch of characters and then just watch them fight. You also never played Perfect Dark because you never played Nintendo games. I played the Perfect Dark when they when they made the point. If you say on the Xbox, unless you played the old version that was on the Xbox, that is not the same thing. I did, I that did try the old shit that, I tried that, that, I'm that not talking about they zero. Put out on the sequel was horrible. I'm not talking about okay. zero. I, I actually tried Perfect Dark on uh, the, the you know Xbox Arcade or whatever it was called back then. And Perfect Dark was literally the best multiplayer game out at that time, and you never played it because you don't fuck with Nintendo. And that just you never you you have never had the experience of being in a battle. Uh, a multiplayer battle on Super Mario Kart 64, and it shows. Like, I am so sad right now, Scar. You have literally never done some things that I found to be absolutely necessary in the world of video games, and it hurts my feelings. I'm over it now, but for a second now, it really had me fucked up. Nah, fuck, fuck Nintendo forever. I don't fuck with that. I guess I got one more last thing, Scar. Did you see... PlayStation Plus Premium, PlayStation's Game Pass is coming out. In yeah, June. I, I, my my PlayStation Four collects dust. Like I, the only time I played my PlayStation Four in the last couple of years is when I first moved in here and my internet wasn't working. And you know, I game share with my daughter, so I couldn't use my Xbox because you have to have an internet connection when you're game sharing. Um, so I just played a bunch. I just basically played. Live 19 and a couple of other things on my PlayStation because I didn't need an internet connection for that. And that's the last time I touched my PlayStation. Um, my daughter has used my PlayStation much more than I ever had. Now. <laughs> and now she has now she has her own. Um, but like my PlayStation is a dust magnet. I recently just took the hard drive off of my PlayStation 4 and put it on my Xbox S because it was like, I just got a hard drive sitting here. I might as well just put it on something I'm actually fucking using. What do you play on your Xbox? Other than the division, uh, division live. I literally uh, said other than the division. And you said City, the division. No, I'm telling you the games that I play: City Skylines. But uh, these Wii were all games you played on the Xbox One, right? I know that because I know you. These were all games played, you played on the Xbox then, One. I, I played. I played a good bit of Halo, um, which you could play on the PC for free. Um, possibly, but not my PC. <laughs> PC well, can't run the division. <laughs> like, what, what are we talking <laughs> about here? My PC can't run the division. I have a game that I paid for that I can't fucking play. Well, the um, division is pretty hefty. Graphics. Yeah, yeah. So I can't, I cannot play that. Um, then, like, you know, the the stuff, like Prison Architect, uh, Two Point Hospital, all of, all basically a lot of the same stuff that I was playing before. But like, when I did play some of the the newer games, when I played a couple of game nights with uh, for, the new Forza Horizon, mm-hmm. that shit look that shit looks fantastic. Um, and I and I know it would look better if I had an X. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But like that game looks fantastic, um, and then Halo are the only games more specifically for the the S. But then I like a lot of the games that I play are XS enhanced. Um, so you know, I, I I I basically I live on Game Pass okay. shit and shit that I've already paid for. Okay, have y'all played Overcooked? Rashani's yes, I played yeah. it with the family. We yeah, played yeah. that right before Kid Awesome went in for his first surgery. We stayed up all night playing that game. Sounds like something. That's, you what I figured, yeah. That's definitely something you play with your kids. Yep, and oh, yeah. laughed and had a great time. You know what? I don't think I ever told y'all this before, but now that you know he's got the clean bill of health, I can say this without crying. I played overcooked with my son like it was the last time I was going to see him alive and savored every moment of it. So now when I play overcooked, I'm not playing overcooked like, you know, just, oh, it's a fun game. I'm playing it with the memories of what I thought was going to happen and didn't happen. So now I can't play overcooked anymore. Get that. 
Like, I loved it in that moment. It was there when we needed it, and I really enjoyed it. But, I, find it yeah. I find it very hard to play Rock Band by myself. I feel you. Like, Bella's not here. I haven't played Rock Band. Oh, Scar, Kid Awesome, took up drums. He's got a, for high school, one of his electives is drumming. Fuck and you, I told him he need really? to holler at you. Yep. That's dope. Yeah, he's really enjoying it. Yeah, the, the game's called Rock Band, not Solo Act, huh? Pretty much. I mean, you can play by yourself, but, like, this shit's just absolutely no fun when you're just sitting there by yourself. It ain't no fun. Yeah, yeah, I'll get that. Have none. When I met you last night, babe, I still can't believe you had never heard Too Close, Brandon. No, I had heard Too Close many times. I didn't know what it was saying. Right. It's a difference. Too Close is a song that you that you play when you're around a bunch of people, so you're not really paying that much attention to the words. You don't play Too Close at home by yourself. You could. A lot of people bought the Maxi single to play it at home by themselves. Maxi single, wow. Maxi single. That's something I ain't heard in a while. All right. Are we ready? We ready to wrap this up? Yeah, if we had done that before, we wouldn't have had children. Right. Raw Dog is since 98. Um, My man. <laughs> this, this has been Scarcasm, um, Spring Fling, um, and with Rashani and Brandon. Um, I'm going to put uh, links to their Twitters into... Well, actually, I'm going to put their Twitters in the title. So, there's that. Um, and check check us all out on uh, Return to Oswald. Uh, we're doing Orphan Black, and Orphan Black is fantastic. And uh, you should watch Orphan Black and then listen to us talk about Orphan Black. Because that would be dope. Um, I don't think there's anything left I have to say. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, showing I up. I have something I have to say. He talks about Orphan Black a lot, but y'all should check out Ratchet Book Club. Shit's also dope. Yes. Listen, and uh, what's what's the name of your show, Brandon? A Watch so serious podcast. He does he does periodically, but yeah, but it's dope too. I jumped I jumped in the live a couple of times, but y'all was talking about something that I ain't know nothing about, so I was just like, all right, I'm gonna go do. Something. <laughs> you know what, Brandon? I talked to Devin on Friday. He was supposed to come see you. He was here in town when we let when we were in Los Angeles, oh, so I missed okay. him. I was so heartbroken, but I got a chance to talk to him. That's my boy. He makes me so happy. Like, just talking to him. That He is literally Scar. We need to get him on a show. He is literally, like, what you would think fresh air sounds like when it talks. Oh, Brandon. Uh, Blue just started watching The Expanse. Yeah. Another one. Mm -hmm. Another one. Yep. We got another one. We got another convert. It's the best. And you know, oh, you know The Expanse is coming out with... uh, Telltale game, Scar. I heard about that. I've heard With, about that. Um, and it's going to be focused on drummer. I've actually heard of. I've actually owned more Telltale games than I've actually played. I know. Well, I that's had, because I of have, fucking Walking a, Dead. No, I had the Humble Bundle, um, and they did a Telltale Humble Bundle. So, like, I ha- I got like the Walking Dead, the Walking Dead ones. I got the Game of Thrones ones. Did you get Batman? Uh, I had, Batman. I, I have Batman on Game Pass. Okay. I have Batman on Game Pass. I haven't played it. Um, I have The Wolf Among Us, um, but I watched Pooh Bear play The Wolf Among Us, so I don't feel the need to actually play it now. So Wolf Among Us is dope. It's based yeah, on Fable, which is a great comic book. For for good things. Um, yeah, I think that's it for us. Uh, uh, don't thank everybody for listening. Um, shout out to these two gentlemen. Uh, go check us out in all of our different places. I'll I'll ask for links and I'll put them in the show notes uh, later. And I think we're out of here. Peace out to the Warriors, yo. Peace. Later. Brandon said peace on here. He wanted to say peace on our own goddamn show. Right? Mm-hmm. Scott Chasm. Scott Chasm. Scott Chasm. Scott Chasm. Scott Chasm. I like that shit, yeah, boy. <laughs> I'm telling you, woke. I'm telling you. All right, I ain't going to talk.